Welcome to this video. In this video, I want to introduce to you the Serial Peripheral Interface Short SPI. Um, we had already a lot of ways to connect a sensor with the NASA microcontroller. The most common way is, of course, A square C communication. But sometimes we will find also a SPI communication, especially when we need a high data rate. Uh, like, for example, with the IMU or accelerometer. <coughs> The most uh, sensors also support the SPI protocol. Uh, SPI was invented or introduced from Motorola in the 18th, and it's still quite often used, yeah, but not so many times with sensors, more for communication, for example, with the memory chip because of the high data rate or with, to, uh, with the NASA microcontroller. <coughs> Uh, a little bit of problem is that there is no official specification from SPI, so you have always to look from, for your sensor or for your product at your semiconductor uh, manufacturer how SPI is really implemented there. It differs a little bit. Uh, another problem is that nowadays there, there is a mixed up with the names. Since the origin design is a master-slave design, but from historical reason they try now to avoid, um, at least a lot of people, uh, the names master and slave. Uh, I can understand this a little bit and um, the problem also is that uh, master and slave doesn't fit really from the name so much, so the better way is now to say in controller and peripherals. But you find still mostly master and slave. In this video, I will use controller and peripherals, and I will explain it later. The other names for the signal lines, also the origin names. So, um, SPI, so there are different versions, but the most common version is that we're having four lines. Um, one line is called Pico, uh, the other line. POKI and SCK and CS. Yeah, four lines. PICO is peripheral in and controller out. So we see here is the signal line. Uh, this is for data which we want to transfer. So original one for this is um, MOSI, master out slave in. Yeah, so most time you find sys names. Um, Pochi or Poki is the other direction, so this means peripheral out, controller in. Uh, in earlier times, mostly uh, used as MISO, master in slave out. Um, SCK is a clock line, um, didn't change. CS is chip select. In earlier time, SS slave select. And it's, uh, you see here, uh, the line up, so it's uh, to activate the peripheral. When this line go uh, low, then the peripheral on this line is activated. And this is a quite simple uh, protocol, so we just transfer serial data, mostly one byte. Uh, we see it here. This is an example communication. Um, so, uh, controller sets a CS line to low. Yeah. Then the peripheral knows the communication with the master uh, with the controller starts. You see, I even mix it up by my own with the master and slave names. Um, then on the Pico line. As the controller sends data at this time, one byte um, in hex code D0. Uh, you see here the values. You can, uh, it's support f um, duplex the protocol. Yeah? So this means the uh, um, controller and the peripheral can send data simultaneously. Yeah? But uh, the starting, of course, normally uh, first the controller sends something and then the um, peripheral answer with something. At the same time, of course, the controller can send like another register which we want to read out. It's possible too. 
So this means the communication is here. Um, let's say we want to read out something from the register D0, since the controller sending this value, and um, the peripheral answer with this value. In this kind, it was a communication with the BME 680. This was the chip ID, and this is the register for the chip ID. And here you're seeing always a clock signal. Yeah? And you see also, um, I mean, the CS line is always low. And um, said as soon as the register is sended, the peripheral start already the communication. So it's setting the pochi line already on low here. But it waits for the first clock signal. Yes, it's a transfer is complete. Um, and then he, uh, sending the next bit. We have also the possibility with SPI to uh, connect multiple devices. The most common way is um, with different uh, CS lines. So this means our controller here has, for example, N uh, CS lines and activate always the peripheral which it want to communicate and the other lines they are connected all in a row so uh, pico for example all peripherals are also connected to pico and the pokey line also yeah. uh, don't forget that really uh, the most time you find here the names uh, mosi and miso at this line and here ss yeah Let's have a look at a simple practical example. So we are using an Arduino Nano for this and a Bosch BME 280 sensor, which understands I2C and SPI. So you're seeing here's the pinouts from the Arduino Nano, and we're having here the lines D12 and D11, which is here called uh, Kipo and Kopi, so uh, more like before Miso and Mosi, um, we are using Poki and Pico, which I find more often the names on more official uh, sites, but which names later are really used, I don't know. The D13 line is a clock line and the D10 line is a chip select line for our connection. Here we're seeing the schematics, how to connect this with our sensors. Yeah, you're seeing here D12, Poké going on the SDO from uh, my board. So I don't have the Adu, uh, Adafruit board. I'm having here from another uh, company. So it's the SDO line. Then we're having here the Pico line, which going on the SDA line from our Bosch sensor BME 280. And the chip select going to the CSB line. Then we're having our clock line, here's a blue one, going in SCL, and then the power supply. Uh, here you're seeing the wiring, yeah, um, it's the same like in the schematic, except that I also uh, did here um, a logic analyzer that I can later analyze the signal. Quite recommended if you're working more with things like this, especially SPI, it's even more worse than I2C for finding errors. I had there a lot of problems, actually. So it's nice to have, and you get one from SparkFun for 20 euro already, and can use pools for you with it. To program it with an Arduino is really simple. We just need a SPI header. Here I have the macro for the register for the chip ID, and I open a serial port, send the SPI, and I set the clock divider to the slowest clock, so divided to 128. Set it's, I think at least it's the slowest set. Um, I can easier see it, it's a logic analyzer. The SPI mode, actually, there are four different SPI modes. Um, there's a parameter clock polarity and clock phase. This is um, clock polarity, how our clock signal looks like if um, the clock signal goes at high or at low, and the phase is at which time, so, uh, when, when a bit is changing, at which time from the clock it's changing. 
uh, we let it here both parameter to zero, which is means an uh, SPI mode zero. Um, so BME works actually with BMI uh, with the SPI mode zero and three. Then in the loop, um, we are just setting the chip signal low. Yeah, don't forget it's here still SS, not CS. And then I transfer our first bytes, the register from the chip ID. Then I wait short and also for the logic analyzer that I get a better signal. And then I transfer a dummy data. Yeah, I just transfer zero because uh, peripheral needs a clock signal that it transfer also something. And afterwards I'm setting the chip select high again. So when I transfer this to the Arduino Nano, we're seeing here when I go to the serial monitor, I getting the chip ID 60, which is for the BME 280. Um, the BME 680, for example, give us the 61. And in the logic analyzer, started. In the logic analyzer, when I capture the signal, you're seeing here our first byte is a D0, and uh, on the Pico line and on the Pokey line, we're getting then at the second byte the 60 as answer, and you're seeing here the clock signals and also our chip select line. Yeah, here the names are also from the origin. We're having MOSI, MISO, and uh, clock. So, and see that it's really changing when I set the second byte, for example, uh, one, two. It doesn't matter um, what second byte I'm sending. In this case, we will get still the answers, but on the uh, Pico line, we're sending then two bytes and the second byte is one, two. This was a short introduction in the theoretical part from SPI and how it works. Yeah. Uh, in the next video, we will then take a look how we program it with Safia and with our NIF5200-840 developer kit. Um, don't forget that you always have to look in the data sheet from the manufacturer when we're programming something like this. Yeah, you need to know which mode and if it's really working like a normal um, SPI. Uh, or if it's differ a little bit, like I think Texas Instruments uh, have a little bit different behavior, um, like the chip select line or something. Uh, so be sure you're taking a look at it first. I hope you like the video. Don't forget to give a thumb up and see you in the next video.